So I just, in that moment, I just felt like I just wasn't heard like the whole time. So that was pretty terrible. Um, but then he finally gave me more and he actually waited a little bit and then he stitched me and then I didn't feel anything. But that was like, that was, that was probably the worst part of the whole experience was just not being heard. Could, and the annoying part of it was that the hospital, whenever I was having like my prenatal follow-ups, they always kept harping on like, you can have your plan. Like, we want to listen to you. We will follow your plan. This man didn't follow my plan. He wanted to basically just hurry up and go home, essentially, which was really upsetting because he was actually in the pregnancy one-on-one classes because his wife was also pregnant. She was only like, do... I think like three weeks after me. So I just like, it's just almost as if, like, would you do this to your wife is really what I wanted to say. But obviously in that moment, I'm not there. I'm just trying to like, try to stay positive because I'm like, okay, at least my son's fine. I'm alive, he's alive. Just cause I know like, you know, the mortality rate with like women of color is pretty terrible. So I'm just like, I'm alive, he's alive. It's okay. But yeah, it was, it was rough. And if I could go back, one, I would have a doula. Two, I probably wouldn't do it at a hospital. (laughs) Probably would do it at a birthing center. Um, But yeah, so it was pretty rough. (laughs) Oh, 